I think there are some really powerful challenges to universities right now, uh, posed by by a number of issues. I mean, one is the the grand challenges that that, that uh, Guanning uh, uh, outlined, um, which can't be solved by individuals and need to be solved by collaboration. And universities are very well placed to to lead that work. But also, uh, as I said, an existential challenge. I mean, the idea that universities uh, have been part of society for hundreds of years is being challenged. There are, there, are, there are electronic online providers that want to undercut universities. There are governments saying, why does it take three or four years to do a degree? Why can't you do it in two? Why can't you do it in one? Um, there, there are people saying that, that education no longer has the value that it used to have because everybody can educate themselves from the internet. Um, uh, there, there, are, there are challenges to funding of universities. So all around the world there are numerous challenges and I think universities have to, uh, to actively uh, oppose these and actively speak out about why we matter, why globalization matters, why education, you know, in my opinion, education is the answer to all the world's problems. Um, why, can't, why doesn't everybody believe that? Why, why are there huge sections of society that don't believe in globalization, don't believe in education? I think we've really got a, a challenge on our, on our hands um, and we have to step up and face it. I think um, we have such fantastic raw materials in universities. We have the brightest uh, kids of their generation coming to study with us. We have international experts in, in a whole range of subjects working in our, in our universities. So we are so well equipped to, to address these challenges. I just think we cannot be complacent. I think we have to modernize. Um, I think we have to recognize that there's whole parts of society that don't believe in what we believe in. Um, and we've got a task on our hands to, 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 to convince them. We talk about impact as making a difference and, and making a difference can be very small. So, so we've got a student project in, in a, a poor part of Hong Kong where they provided new roofs for the um, uh, makeshift uh, housing um, that, that, that the, 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 these residents were having to endure. It's an illegal uh, housing establishment. Um, they, they had no decent roofs and the students went and built roofs for them. That's impact. That's making a difference to someone's lives. Uh, that's fantastic. It's not on a global scale, it's a very local problem, but actually that's a very powerful example of just making a difference, I think. And then, um, the, we, so we measure it by, 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 by change, by, by what's happened. And, and like everybody else, we're, we're devising ways of, of telling those stories. And, and the um, next research assessment in Hong Kong, which will be in 1920, will incorporate impact in the same way that REF uh, 2014 did in the UK. And so we're learning from the UK's experience about how to measure impact. Um, I, I think it's a very interesting literature. I've always felt for my own field in medicine that impact is a gift. I mean, we can, you know, medicine, medical research has direct impact of relevance to every human being on the planet. It's much more difficult to measure for some of the other, especially the arts and humanities and some of the other uh, uh, subjects. So, so I think we can't have one model for all uh, subject disciplines, but basically it's ways of measuring the fact that something that we've done and something our students or staff have done has made a difference in some part of the world.